Eureka! Hiya, my name is Leon Gray, and welcome to Gray's Opinion Pieces, a show where I give you my opinions, rundowns, and lists on any subject that I can think of. Now, I know you guys were expecting a Critical Courtroom episode this month, but I really wanted to test out this new show and format and see if it works out well, so please bear with me. If this video gets enough good reception, I will continue the series and do my best to make two videos a month along with it. However, if it does bad, I'm just gonna go back to making Critical Courtroom exclusively. But now to celebrate this new show, I have to pick a really good topic to start with, and I just can't get one to come to mind. Wait. Gotcha! I've got the perfect topic. Top 5 Desperation Moves in Video Gaming! A list all about unique moves that characters pull off in a last-ditch effort to take the win. My only rule for this list is going to be one pick per franchise, so no using both brutalities and fatalities from the Mortal Kombat franchise as an example. That was also a really bad example considering the fact that Mortal Kombat isn't anywhere on this list. But anyways, let's get started! HOLD IT! Octopath Traveler is a fantastic JRPG that came out on the Nintendo Switch last year and blew everyone away, including myself. It has a beautiful score, fantastic writing, well-designed characters, and a masterpiece of a turn-based battle system. And part of that battle system is one of the best desperation move mechanics I've seen in any turn-based RPG the BP system. Now while the BP system isn't a unique move to any specific character, any character can use it to take one of their moves and power it up to four times the power. The system works like this. While you're in any combat scenario, you and your party will always start with one battle point, and you can gain up to five during the battle. You can use up to four on one specific character to make their moves increase to four times the power in itself turning it into a desperation maneuver. And this isn't just limited to combat maneuvers either, you can also use it to heal, cure status effects, give the party buffs and debuffs. It's a fantastic system. The only reason it is not higher up on this list is because, again, it's not unique to every character. It's something that everybody in the party can use, and all it does is buff their maneuvers specifically. On the other hand, HOLD IT! Rage Arts from Tekken 7 are one hell of a desperation maneuver to use in combat. Rage Arts are a devastating last-ditch effort unique to every single character on the Tekken roster. Each one of these Rage Arts has their own special animation, voice acting, hitboxes, ways to combo into them. It's just so much fun to go into the training mode and try out each one of these different Rage Arts. To use a Rage Art in actual combat, you yourself must have taken a hefty amount of damage for your character to be able to activate it but it is the best feeling in the world when you use a Rage Art and you bring the match back and pull off that beautiful victory. And before any of you ask, my favorite is Negan's. <laughs> Look at that. Taking it like a champ! Hold it! Kingdom Hearts has always had a special place in my life, and the long-awaited release of Kingdom Hearts 3 was no different for me than anybody else who was waiting for it. While Kingdom Hearts 3 was in development, I was speculating on whether or not if form changes were going to make a return, and if they did, were they going to bring back that really terrible anti-form desperation maneuver from Kingdom Hearts 2. And to my dismay, they did. But to my surprise, they made it a fantastic desperation maneuver. Now, unlike all the other form changes in Kingdom Hearts 3, Sora can have any Keyblade equipped and still go into Rage form. However, he must be at critical HP for even a chance to go into it. And yes, that's right, I said the word chance. Sometimes when Sora is at critical HP, he will be given the reaction command to go into Rage form, which is kind of like Anti-Form from Kingdom Hearts 2, but unlike Anti-Form, it's not complete garbage. To anyone who doesn't know, here's the difference between Anti-Form and Rage form. Anti-form was used more as a punishment, to tell you to slow down and not use your drive forms as much, while rage form is a way for you to get the upper hand in combat when you're about to lose. Anti-form couldn't do anything but spam X and attack, that's all you could do. However, in rage form, while you still can't use magic, you can attack, dodge, combo properly, be able to get in and out of combat swiftly, and you can get out of rage form when you choose. You don't have to wait for the bar to run out. While both forms are a full heal, 
Rage Form can at least defend itself and be able to handle itself in combat. And Rage Form does it quite well. It has some of the best combos in Kingdom Hearts 3. Whenever the option to use Rage Form popped up in my playthrough, I always used it. It was a fun, fantastic desperation maneuver, and it brought me right back to full health so I could keep myself going in the middle of combat. It would have been number two on the list if it weren't for the fact it's all reliant to chance. This next pick, however, is more based on skill than chance. HOLD IT! The sparking mode buff from Dragon Ball Fighters is by far the most important desperation move on this list, just in terms of how useful it is. Sparking mode is a one-time use buff that you can use in the middle of combat to regenerate recently lost health and increase your strength for a certain period of time depending on how many characters are left in your team. It's a fantastic last ditch effort that takes a lot of skill to use because you have to know when to use it, how to combo into it, and how to keep it going long enough to take out the rest of the opposing team. Using sparking mode doesn't make you invincible, however, it can be very valuable if used in the right scenario. It's a fantastic desperation maneuver and the only reason it's not number one on this list List is because the next pick is blinding me with nostalgia. HOLD IT! The limit breaks from the Final Fantasy franchise to me are the most memorable and recognizable desperation maneuvers in all of video gaming. In fact, there's so many of them and they're so unique, I could make a whole top 10 list on Final Fantasy limit breaks alone. So for simplicity's sake, I'm only going to be using the Final Fantasy VII Limit Breaks as an example, considering the fact it's the one game that comes to mind for most people when you say the words Final Fantasy. For people who don't know, Limit Breaks work like this. Every character in the party has their own specific limit gauge, and after taking a certain amount of damage or doing a certain amount of actions, their limit gauge will fill and your normal attack command will turn into the limit command. After that, depending on how far you are into the game, every character will have one of many different limit commands to choose from. And each one of these limit commands can do one of many different things. Heal the party, buff the party, remove status ailments, and do MASSIVE amounts of damage. And each one of the limit commands has their own unique animation. If you're a Final Fantasy fan, you cannot tell me you don't remember the Omni Slash. When I first saw this, when I beat Final Fantasy VII as a kid, it stuck with me that whenever I think of the words desperation maneuver, Final Fantasy will always come to mind. And for that reason alone is why I put the Final Fantasy limit breaks at the number one spot. No, I want to end it here, but I feel like this is missing something. I just can't put my finger on it. Holy- I think my favorite desperation move is the final smash from the Smash Bros series. Every character has their own final smash and they vary in strength, especially with the latest series with over 70 characters. Sure, some of them are functionally similar in the latest series, but they're quick, strong, and get the job done. And for the most part, these final smashes are done in desperation as everyone scrambles to either get the smash ball or work hard enough to get their final smash meter filled, usually getting more when you're hurt more. Whoa! Thanks, Cream. I think that's just what we were missing. Guys, if you don't know who Kareem B. Rabbit is, she is a fantastic content creator here on YouTube and has supported me tons and tons of times in the past. Please, if you haven't already, go check her channel out. It's right here on the screen and it will be in the description below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching my first top 5 video in this style. I know it's kind of jarring not seeing a critical courtroom, but I really want to experiment a little more with what I have. Please do let me know what you think of the video in the description below. Let me know how the format worked, if you guys liked it, what needs to be changed, and then tell me what your favorite desperation moves in video gaming are. Let's have a little conversation about it, a little tit for tat. Let's go for it. If you guys want to keep updated on how Critical Courtroom is coming, please do feel free to follow me on social media at LeonSenpaiCC on Twitter. Follow my Twitch channel, LeonSenpaiCC, and feel free to join the public Discord, which is in the description below. If you guys enjoy what I do here, please do feel free to subscribe. It really helps me out, lets me know I'm doing great here on YouTube. And if you want to be updated whenever I upload a new Critical Courtroom video, hit that bell for notifications so you can be updated every time a new video goes live. On screen right now is the link to my channel, the link to Cream's channel, and a link to the Critical Courtroom Complete playlist. Again, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys have a fantastic day!